Good. Hi. Pleasant day. I want to talk a little bit about Hayden Rogers Celestin. My name is Colonel Neil Bennett, retired military officer. I had the distinct pleasure of meeting Hayden when I moved into the community where he lived at a very tender age. I was about 12 years old. So we've been friends for approximately 50 years, five decades. One thing about Hayden is that I was reminded recently by my younger brother that he was one of the first young men in the community that reached out and introduced himself to us as persons who were just moving in because we had come from a different area of Trinidad and we came into the Tinapuna area where he was born and grew up. He comes from a wonderful family. Uh, uh, in those days, poor, humble beginnings. So his grandfather, whose name was Lancelot Bain, was a carpenter by trade. So he built houses and stuff like that. And Hayden grew up with a single parent. His mother and dad weren't married, uh, so he grew up with cousins and aunts and uncles all growing up in the same house. And one of the things that I admired most about him was at a very tender age he was into athletics. He competed and he traveled extensively with Carifta games and a number of games. So every time he traveled, he would come back and tell us about it. And of course, the other youngsters, he had brothers and well, no brother, sorry, at home living there with us, but brother on the father's side. But he would tell us about his travels and of all the quests that he would experience. Um, as we grew older, we developed a significant bond. So by the time I was 17 plus, I got my driver's license and I was able to borrow my dad's car. And uh, he and I would go on all kinds of jaunts and whenever we borrowed the car, I would treat it as if it was the last time. And we would do all kinds of crazy stuff. And I tell you, crazy stuff. Um, things I am not permitted to mention here now. But think about two young men. One 17 plus and one 21 plus. Moving around in a big fancy car at the time. And with a registration plate that was unique and easily identifiable. But able to go places and do things and of course you know at that age young men would come across attractive young ladies so there are things we wouldn't want to talk about <laughs> but we've had some really fantastic times uh, then I joined the military when I got to the age of 20 he was a couple years older than me as you would have realized and it is very early in my military career that I was able to see him. We all aspired. Let me, let me see this. We all aspired to get into the public service. So you either wanted to join um, the police service, the fire services, or the army. Um, because, you know, you're young, you're taught, you're gung-ho, you want to do it. He went to do the fire services test. And that was when it was brought to his attention that there was something that was medically irregular. So he didn't get in. And not too long after that, he developed some high fever over a weekend. I mean, we normally knock about in our bell-bottom jeans and tight-fitting jersey, and we flash in all over the place because, of course, I still had access to my dad's car. There was never a last time that he lent me. For some strange reason, I, I don't know why my father allowed Hayden and I to do that, but we got away with murder. And that's when he fell sick. And he was thoroughly at the point where one would think that he would die. He ended up in the ICU in our Port of Spain General Hospital in Trinidad, all swollen, about to die. And for some strange reason, he was able to overcome that. His dad worked at Caribbean Airlines as a technician looking after the aircraft maintenance with the radars. Uh, we hooked up a flight. Then his uncle worked at Kings County. And as he landed here, he went straight to Kings County. And this is a guy who went on a stretcher into the tail end of the aircraft and was able to fly up here. I'm talking about somebody 
when I saw him, he was on death's bed. And he overcame that and was able to do four decades of dialysis. He had his own regime. He had his own methodology. He never incorporated all of the specifics with nutrition. He defied all of medical expectations that he would survive only for five or 10 years. He survived four decades, which is 40 years. And during that time, he ensured that he was able to maintain his lifestyle by doing his dialysis and going and doing his assignments. The thing about his conquest with photography and becoming a professional photographer is that he started to do odd jobs up here. And what he told me is he went to a boat yard and was working for a guy, he and his uncle was working for a guy who threw out a box of books. And those books were about photography. So he asked the man if he could get those books. The man said, yeah, I'm throwing that out. You can have them. And he started to read about photography and cameras and that kind of thing. And then he got this very little small camera and he started to practice. So much so that one day he came to Trinidad on a trip and took a picture of a rose that he brought. He stuck the rose branch into the ground. And many years later he grew up. And that was one of the things my mom treasured, that this rose tree was planted by Hayden in her yard and it grew up and it blossomed for years. And that was his start with photography. He took a picture of that rose and he sent it back to her. And he was able to really perfect the profession of photography. And the thing that after all of those years and all of the trials and tribulations that he went through, that when I read what Felicia had done on Hayden Roger, he was a phenomenal individual and a phenomenal photographer. There are things in life where even your closest friends don't know what you do. There are some of us who keep things private. And Hayden Roger was private, but at the same time, focal. If you did something that he was displeased with, you would know, because he was fluent with a language that I refer to as the industrial language. You would get the Fs coming off the tip of his town, and the MCs coming off the tip of his town through the lips, and you would certainly get the brunt of how he feels about something. But he was genuine, he was honest, he was caring, he was loving, he was kind. And one of the things that he had about him is that he was able to pull people and get them together. Because even here, at this event, I'm meeting people for the first time who I've heard a lot of stories about. And there are people who are hearing stories about me and meeting me for the first time. So much so that recently, um, as recent as about nine months ago, he sent a friend down to Trinidad. I hooked up with a guy, I took him for a drink. I gave him my family background because he said, you know what, about two men with nothing to do, you talk about something. So we talked about my family background. The following day, the guy called me and said, hey, my aunt is your cousin. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, my auntie Joan is your cousin Joan. I'm like, damn, this is a small world. So we're related. So right now, that, uh, that person, Austin Hutchins, is now my family through Joan Bailey, who is my first or second cousin, and his mother's half-sister, true father. Interesting. That's just how life is. And it is true, Roger, Hayden, Celestine, that we met. I must say that his nickname is Stumble. I just heard my cousin talking about it behind me. He changed his name when he came here. He didn't call himself Roger anymore because in Trinidad he's known as Roger. But he used his second name as his first name, Hayden. Um, guy love jazz, love music, love life, love life. Always, always overcoming challenges. And what I want to say is he is a loss that I have not experienced because I've never lost any of my siblings. I lost my parents, I lost my son. And this is a reminder of the loss of my son. But he's so close with me, it is 
to the point where he's closer to me than my own brothers. All right? Anytime I visit New York, I stay with him. I've never stayed with anybody else once I can stay with him. I would come here and not go by my brother. I have a brother who resides here, but I would stay with Hayden. And we would spend endless, countless hours on the couch. His mom would come and say, hey, 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 listen, it's 4 o'clock in the morning, you're not going to sleep. And while she's leaving to go to work, he say, well, you know what? I go in for my dad's house at 5 o'clock. Meet me down in Manhattan. I said, for what? He said, come, 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 you just come and meet me. Meet me at so-and-so point. And when I go down there, the man walking all over the place. I, a military officer, supposed to be fit. And that son of a bitch walking me all over Manhattan. He's the first person to take me to Wall Street, show me the bull, take me to Staten Island. He, and he just used to love to walk. I used to want to know where he get all this damn energy from. You know? And if you didn't know, he always wore long sleeves. So if you didn't see his hand, you will never know that he had a fistula and he was the dialysis patient. You would never know that. So for all of you who are here, this is my story. There's so much more I can tell you, but I don't want to take up more time because we're covering this and we like everyone else to contribute. He's been my partner for 50 years. We had a fantastic relationship. He always gave me good advice when I was doing crap. He would tell me I'm doing crap. Fix it. He was always there for me no matter what. And one thing I must say, he never asked for anything. Roger would never ask you for something. Even when he wanted a new piece of camera equipment, he would work his ass off, get his pictures, and buy his own camera. He would always never ask you for money, although he was going through hard times. He would work his ass off and make this money so that he would maintain himself. He never asked anyone for anything. I want to take this opportunity to tell all of his well-wishers, friends, loved ones, and all of those people who have been his friends, that all that you've done, it's really, really appreciated. And your relationship with Hayden has been exceptional. Thank you for all that you've done for him through his life, and I really appreciate it. And I want you all to remember him for his good deeds and his fluent words. Many times you have heard the fox and the other thing, but it wasn't ill meant. It was meant with good intentions because he never kept anybody in mind. There was never any animosity. There was never any contention. He would cuss you out and then talk to you five minutes later. So God bless and may we send him off and may he rest in peace. He's going to continue to look over us. He has touched many lives and many souls. And I want you to continue to stay connected. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, good, good morning. My name is Claudia Coombs Redman. I'm a very dear and good friend of Roger Celestin. Um, I knew him for quite a few years. We are neighbors and we are as close as family. Uh, Joseph Coombs, he used to run track with my uncle Joseph Coombs on Trinidad many moons ago. Yes, so that's how we, our family knew them. And um, we, uh, we lived in the, we found out we lived in the same building. And um, I kept, spent a lot of time with Roger after he came back home from the surgery, the first surgery. And I, he loved my cooking. I cook every weekend, every Sundays I would cook for Roger and I'd bring him food. He loved bacon, salt fish and all that good stuff. <laughs> and the cranberry rice with the sweet and sour chicken and all that stuff. I made him smile. We had lots of fun together. My husband would go and visit him. They would watch the sports together. And Arden Redmond is my husband. And um, they would uh, listen to music, teach each other things about uh, video, t video, um, the, the TV with the, the, the stick, the stick, you know, they, they did a lot of, uh, with the movies and all the stuff that from Trinidad, they would re review all the carnival things they would talk about and spend time together with. And, um, and then this last couple of time when he went into the hospital, uh, that was, he went into Monday, Monday I talked to him, he called me Monday, they didn't do the procedure yet. Tuesday called me, they didn't do the procedure yet. And Wednesday, you know, they, I didn't hear from him at all. So I called the hospital, Methodist, and I inquired. I said, How's, where's Mr. Celeste? And what, what, you know, I haven't heard from him. What, is everything okay? And they said he was in ICU. But then I started to panic. So I had family member 
my cousin worked in, worked that worked in Methodist, so I had to check for me and see what's going on. And that's when I found out it's, it was serious. She, she was giving me the bad news, telling me that it doesn't look that well. But we still kept praying and had hope. And then I visited him, and um, I played shadow music. I played music. He, he started moving his feet and blinking his eye and so forth. So you know that gave me inspiration to say, okay, he, he, he can come around. He, he's going to come out of this. And he said, he said, I said, I'll pick up the mail, I'll pick up the mail. He said, no, but I'm going to be home Wednesday. I said, don't worry, I'll water the plan for you and stuff. Wednesday never came, Reggie never came out. And um, it's been, it went downhill after that. But I cherish all the memories and the time that we spent together. I love him a lot. He's a good friend. And um, I miss him dearly. I still can't believe he's gone. Could not till this day, till I saw him today that he's really gone. But God, you know, I... I thank God for him. I, I thank God for allowing me to be a part of his life and sharing the times that we spent together. And I give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. And may he rest in peace. We miss him dearly. Yeah. Hello, I'm Kurt Shade. Um, Roger was my best friend. Um, he really was my cousin's best friend. So he was Neil first, and then when he came up here, I kind of took over. Uh, Neil called me and told me, make sure you take care of my friend. Um, we've been together for countless years, both here and in Trinidad. Um, I would talk to him every night. Uh, I must admit, I, I, admit I miss that. Um, we've got, but as we always say, we have memories, you know? Memories are what we have, and we'll have them forever. So whether he's not here now, he'll always be with us, you know? Um, just like she said, I spoke to him that week, and the expectation was that it was supposed to be a relatively simple procedure. And next thing you know, he has this massive stroke, and you know, he is in the position that he's in now. Um, all I can say, I love him and I miss him. And uh, you know, we'll be together eventually. All right? Thank you. Hi, I'm Felicia Prasad. I'm publisher of News Americas. And Roger actually was one of our staff photographers for many, many years. And then after he got really ill with back surgery, he became not just a staff photographer to me, but a friend that I would just talk to every day almost. And we would just talk about all kinds of stuff. And, you know, he was just one of the most positive, joke killer amazing person who never complained even though he was struggling with his health challenges he never once complained about it he always would say darling I'm here you know I'm here trying and I think that's the sort of legacy that a lot of us would really love to have people say when we're not on this plane anymore that we never whined or complain that we always showed love and care and really just brought people together and I think that was Roger. He was a professional photographer. We always knew that. Uh, he could be very acidine with people who got in the way of his shots and, and his work. But at the end of the day, his friends were his friends. He was loyal and just very, very faithful and loving and caring and encouraging. And I think uh, for me, it's really a very hard time and a great loss. It's been this way for months and we were hoping and believing for a miracle um, but now I think Roger's in a whole other place and I just can say maybe he's going to be taking uh, photographs up there and looking down on all of us right now and smiling that he his legacy is that he brought all of his friends now together as family and I think we are going to be now the family and the legacy that Roger uh, has left behind. Hi, my name is Julie Kwashi Blackman, and I met Hayden about 30 years ago. He has always been a jovial person, very jokey, always funny, easy to get along with. In spite of his health situations, he never allowed it to bother his views in life and what he wanted to do for himself and I was always proud of the strides that he made in doing whatever he wanted to do for himself and now I can see that 
everything is coming together now. All his beautiful photos are out there and it's so sad to see that a bright light has gone so soon, but I know God has a plan for all of us and God had a plan for him and his work here on earth is done. So we now have to go on and do our part and continue to keep him in our mind, remember him and live on the memories and the good things that we learn from him. Thank you. Good shade. Yeah, uh, this is a very sad occasion. Uh, Roger is really a special individual. I have never met anyone with such determination and constitution to go through all that he has gone through. Uh, I met him about almost a little over 40 years ago when he came up here to start dialysis. Uh, he ended up being one of my uh, son's uh, godfathers, my eldest son. But overall, though, always a very laughable guy. I mean, always like have, have fun, play jazz. Uh, one of the good things, uh, the last couple of years, I was able to spend, like almost every Sunday, take a little food for him and sit down and drink and laugh and stuff. And, and we share a lot of experiences and stuff. And through that, met some other folks of his here who are really fine people. So he will, he will be remembered all the time. I, I pray. It's sad to see him go. But as the same case with my mother a couple of years back, it was time for him to go because when you're suffering to that point where and there's no no return, then what's the point? I go make peace in Jesus' bos bosom and and, and 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 again I know we, I'll see him again because we all have to resurrect at some point in time. So God's blessings and comfort to the family and friends, and uh, he will be certainly missed. My name is Anita Samuels, and I uh, write for the New York Daily News. And working with Roger was always a pleasure, always hilarious. And one of my favorite stories that we worked on together was the story for the black church. So we went around to all the black churches in the city. And I just remember at the Christian Cultural Center, it's a huge mega church. We were running around all over to take the pictures. I just remember I had such a struggle trying to keep up with Roger. I mean, I was literally breathless following him, but it was hilarious. I was like, okay, wait a minute, wait, okay, all right, we have to go here next, and we have to be quiet. Okay, wait, we have to go all the way up and around. It was hilarious, but Roger, you know, you'll be missed. 
and I'll always remember that day. Everybody, if you could please stand. I'm just going to do a little something we do back home when, when someone has done their work and it's time to make that transition. You know, as much as we, as much as we, uh, we not like the fact that they're on their way home, it is that time and that's what it is. So all who know it, can you please follow with me? One right morning. When this life is over, transition back to the place that he came from. Amen. We give thanks for his parents, his mother, his father. We give thanks for his 